At 31 years old and in his ninth IndyCar season, Ed Carpenter is now a series elder statesman. This husband and father embraces his role as dad, traveling the circuit with his young family close by. He is also an intense competitor, whose maiden IndyCar win hastened a bold step into team ownership, a move that brings greater pressure, but with it, hopes of greater reward. For the next 36 hours, Ed Carpenter, driver, owner, husband and father, takes us into his world on IndyCar 36. It's Friday morning at the Iowa Speedway, day one of a rare two-day show for the IndyCar series. It is also the final stop of a five consecutive race stretch that has taxed both drivers and crews alike. With an eye toward drawing additional interest, a unique format of three evening heat races will set the grid for tomorrow's Iowa Corn 250. To add to the pressure, today's second practice session times will set the lineups for the heats with the top eight battling for pole in heat three. As a driver, I think it can be fun. As an owner, I think it's silly because it doesn't pay any points, doesn't pay any money. You know, so I just didn't qualify as an owner. An additional twist this weekend is a down force reduction mandate from IndyCar, intended to increase the challenge for drivers. We've never had a bad race at this racetrack. The lack of the downforce here, yeah, it's making it harder and putting it in our hands, but I also feel like it's going to make for a little less passing and probably a little more strung out race, which isn't what the Iowa fans are used to seeing. Having tested here just two weeks ago, the team had a good handle on the track. The loss of downforce is significant, however, as Ed is just 16th quick in the first practice session. Regardless, he remains optimistic. We're off a little bit on a balance from where we're at the test, but out of practice one, I feel like we're a little better than what we showed on the time charts and should be able to have a better session practice too. Ed Carpenter was brought up through quarter midgets to the short tracks of USAC. Indy Lights followed, and a win in the 2003 Freedom 100 at Indianapolis led to an IndyCar ride by season's end. With persistence, Ed's first IndyCar win came last season at the Kentucky Speedway, a track at which he had finished runner-up twice consecutively the seasons prior. Went to Kentucky knowing that we were going to have a good chance to win just based on history and it was the same car same package I was working with the same engineer I'd been with had a really strong finish racing against Dario he's a, a living legend I think and one of the best ever two months later a team ownership opportunity with Fuzzy's Vodka unexpectedly surfaced and they said hey we, we want to throw something at you and we kind of thought it's late at night they're drinking too much Fuzzy's They'll change their mind in the morning, but honestly, they didn't. My name's on the team, and I'm a big part of it, but, you know, we we have Derek as our general manager. I keep an eye on the, on the budgets, the plans, um, hire and fire. Um, you know, the organization, even as young as it is, has come together with a lot of good people. Derek worked for Roger Pinsky and owned his own organization for a long time and was very successful, so having that support and experience makes it really easy for me just to back off sometimes and not really changing my routine much from what it's been in the past. It is now 2.30, and practice session two is underway. Based on the morning session, there is optimism, but it is quickly dampened. I'm hitting. thing is terrible. Copy. I don't know if we missed it on the arrow bounce but the flap change. And the whole car just feels light. It wasn't even close to being flat. Like it feels like I, you know, on three and four especially, it feels like I'll crash. Plus one turn, front wing, please. Copy, plus one front wing. I'm not really worried about the top eight at this point. So there's a lot of cars that are obviously better than I think. Still not as good as where we've been in the past. It's amazing how much different it feels than when we were here last. We're going to do some things in L to help help out the other steer of the test, so we're doing that like we're spring here. And uh, we'll keep working at it. Okay. Carpenter, awfully slow on the racetrack, especially with guys trying to get into the top eight. There's just not enough grip in this car. Okay. If I would have gone flat through three and four, I probably would have lost it. I don't know that we've done anything to make the car better since we've been out here. Okay. Ed's impressions are correct. By session's end, the car has not improved. 22nd fastest, 
and starting from the back in the first heat race. With this new aero package with the downforce being off, it's really um, shown some deficiencies in our car that we didn't necessarily see at the test. So we need to just keep keep trying some things and uh, try to get, better, get a better setup and direction for tomorrow night, you know, which is when it all counts. IndyCar 36 is brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy racing. It is 6 o'clock Friday evening. IndyCar's experiment with heat races to set the grid for tomorrow's race is about to begin. But the steep decline in performance from the recent test continues to loom large, for Ed and for others. It's pretty difficult. It's a lot more difficult than the test, I thought, too. Yeah, we're nowhere near as good as we were. No, like, I thought we were amazing at the test. Yeah. And, like, I thought we'd be amazing when we came here, and then we rolled off, and it was, it was not near as good as it was at the test. Yeah, I agree. So, I don't know. Oh, have a good one. Be good. All right, man. The heat races are 30 laps in length, and Ed rolls off 7th of 8 in the first heat. Focus is entirely on improving the car for the race. Get ready. It is very, very difficult to pass. It's going to be a battle to see at the first lap or two to see where you can get before you slot into this aero turbulent battle. Might be the finishing order. Yeah. No way to get to anybody. How's the balance? No grip. On the loose side. Somehow I don't think this is what they had by when they got your heat. Halfway. Halfway. It's going off. One turn and three. Copy. Looks like everybody's going off. They're going off worse than you are. It's a good package. Checker flag. Saw the fans on their feet. <laughs> Can't wait for 250 after that. Was there any passing? No. There's no way they're going to sell tickets for that. <laughs> It's very challenging, which is what drivers wanted, but at the same time, it makes it nearly impossible to get close to anyone to make a pass. And, you know, we've got to make it, it's got to be hard for us and challenging, but at the same time, we're entertainment, you know, and we're not going to get more people to come out here with racing like that. As the sun sets on a challenging day in Newton, Iowa, Ed Carpenter will start from the 22nd position in the race that unusually is still more than 24 hours away. Carpenter's greatest source of pride is his family. He met Heather in 2003, and they were married two years later. Now parents of McKenna and Ryder, with a third child due in December, Ed and Heather are determined to maintain a strong family structure, despite the travel and time demands of racing. Our family is really the most important thing to us. It's hard to leave that behind, so if you're not incorporating your family into that, you're not really you know, I'm not going to have the opportunity to be a dad for my kids, and that's not something that we're interested in. We get to go to work with Daddy. Not many people can say they get to go to work with their husband or spend time with them throughout their job. You know, he can stop by and say hi to the kids, or we're right here so the kids can play, and when Daddy walks out, they get to see him. Kids never have a bad day, so, you know, they definitely make it feel better when you're not having the best of days. When we get to places, I try to make it fun for them, whether, you know, it's just whether it's just swimming at the hotel pool, or we try to find museums, or today we went to Adventureland. You ready for the balloon ride? No. No? Why not? Because it's so scary. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's not scary. It's not scary. No. Hold I love this ride. You love this ride. I'm still dizzy from that. I am too. <laughs> that one made you dizzy. What are we gonna ride next? Yeah. Yeah. The ladybug. Hey, I gonna go on the boat ride. We can maybe do that. I'd hate for them to miss out on seeing all these places and remembering what they get to see and taking you know advantage of these opportunities. Back of the bus. This is about where I'm starting tonight. You can't fit in. Sit outside with me in this one. No. Okay. <laughs> Daddy's got to ride by himself. <laughs> Let's go this way. All right, this way. This when way. are you going to get ice cream? After you eat lunch. Then you can have ice cream. You smack me too hard. They still don't see as much of me as they're used to. 
in the off season especially, so it's nice to be able to give them some time in the, on a race weekend. You don't have to do so a nice treat to spend some time with Daddy on the road. But shortly, Ed's mind will shift to other matters. The race start is eight hours away, and there is now a significant chance of rain. In recent years, the Iowa IndyCar race has been a night affair under the lights. A 9 p.m. green flag leaves plenty of time to connect with the fans. Ed heads to the driver autograph session in the IndyCar fan village, where the enormous crowd is eager to meet their IndyCar heroes. Sure. We always get such great support in Iowa. That they've got great race fans there. There you go. go night? I think so, yeah. Need a few changes from last night, but we'll be all right. And the weekend's heat race format remains a hot topic with the fans. Yeah, it'd be great to qualify and then have like a heat race. And yeah, and it, just like there needs to be some sort of transfer process right. or, or something. Yeah. Whether it's signing a shirt or a die cast or whatever, I think having that connection with the fan base is why our fans are so loyal. From there, it's time for Ed to take care of his sponsors. An integral component of Ed Carpenter Racing is partner Fuzzy's Vodka, named for founder and PGA champion Fuzzy Zeller. Now give it up for the man who drives the number 20 Fuzzy's machine, Ed Carpenter! Each race they have the stage in the fan village and we have a bit of a putting competition. Oh. At Iowa we had some good golfers, but, you know, the, the, it didn't last very long. Look at this guy, this guy's serious and drowns Wow! We had three putts go in pretty quick and we gave away our prizes and it made it a short appearance for me. So as the fans continue to file in, anticipating the 9 o'clock start, Ed is back in the trailer grabbing a quick meal and briefing race engineer Matt Barnes on the latest news from IndyCar chief steward Bo Barfield. He's got new cameras for starts and restarts, so he's going to be calling a lot more jumping penalties, I think. I don't know. He doesn't want people pulling out of line before it goes green. And he's now scanning all the channels too, listening to spotters, so to see if we move in reaction to a spotter telling us where a car is going to be. Meanwhile, the forecasted rain has arrived. It has been spitting periodically throughout the day, but now it is coming down hard. Right now, we're just going to move forward like the race is going to go on tonight. Uh, so all the guys will finish their prep work, pre-race prep, final setup. Uh, we'll do our pre-race meeting with, with Ed and a strategy meeting. So what's our windows? The second window is 99, 135. Third window is 167.204. What um, mixture settings? Anything? Anything different? Same, same, same. Same, same. A lot of people want to take tires seemingly, but for us, we think we need track position and we want to try and, you know, try and make something happen. You know, we might stay out. I think you might stay out. I think, like you said, it's going to depend on how, we, how our pace settles in and how consistent the car is and how quick, how quick new tires are dropping off, how much fuel we use in a lap. 3.2. So half a gallon. Call it a half gallon if I lose radio. Did it stop raining still from when we came back from the meeting? It just was kind of spitting. Broken orange. By 8 o'clock, the rain has stopped, and the sun fights to break through the clouds. Track drying efforts are proving fruitful, and it is announced that the race will proceed with only minor delays. We just had a little bit of rain come through, you know, pushing us back about a half hour, so there's been a little bit of uncertainty of when we're going to go, but it's looking like we're going to get started here real soon. It's always a little challenging when you have those delays because we have a schedule, they play the anthem, I start, you know, hug my mom, kiss Heather, you know, get ready, get in the car. You know, at Iowa, I think they were still drying pit road or something, so you're kind of in limbo. Have they given any indication we're behind schedule? I'm a routine person. Left glove goes on first, right glove goes on. I get in the car from the left side. Um, I'm not superstitious. If, if you asked me to put my right glove on, I would. You know, it's not going to affect the outcome the way I understand things to work, so just stay more focused that way. We've got ourselves one very, very fast 7 8 mile oval here at Iowa Speedway. 
the 98 car of Alex Tagliani has spun. And so we're not going to go green here on this lap. We've got a car with a problem before we even drop the green flag. It is our That's pole sitter. Dario Franchitti, the number 10 machine. A huge puff of smoke went up in the number wow. 10 car. I've never seen someone spin out and blow an engine, you know, before we ever took the green. It was, it was bizarre. It was a weird start to the race. We passed two cars before we ever even started. Elio Castro Neves, he will get the green flag. He will be the early leader in front of Marco Andretti. Here comes the two-car Briscoe to the outside in one. What a good battle for the third spot. They go side by side, and they come off of turn number two. Looks like everybody cleaned at the exit of two. Elio in command for now off of four. By quarter distance, Ed has fought to 15th position, but has fallen a lap down to the leader, James Hinchcliffe. About the time he lapped me, the car started coming to us, and I got all my adjustments made in the car, and we were running pretty good lap times relative to the leaders. Good job, let's get that lap back. There was a couple of times where I thought maybe I was going to get my lap back from him, uh, but then the yellow came out. Couple of cars against the wall. One of them appears to be the 12 machine of Will Power, and the other one I think is the number five machine of EJ Fizo. We'll get a back right here, so we'll let these guys stop. We'll get the wave around, and we'll stop. stop. We're going to stay out. We want to get behind the pace car so we get waved around here. So when they wave you around, I want you to go to mixture one and hustle. We got to get around here in a hurry. Go, 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 go. 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 Wave in your round. Go, go, go. Mixture one, go. The way the rules are now, we're able to get a wave around, get packed up, and IndyCar gives us the opportunity to still make a pit stop. Pit this time, pit this time. Hustle around. All the brakes, all the brakes. What are you talking about, Tim? The pace car is a f***ing half lap in front of us. Yeah. Practice too short to do that. That was dumb. That was freaking brilliant. So we had gotten our lap back, immediately came in the pits, and before we had our pit stop done, the pace car went back by and we lost our lap again. That was seriously, seriously bonehead. I don't know why we are in a hurry to pit, because there's still two crash cars on the back stretch. It was a big missed opportunity, because at that point, the car was coming on strong. All right, it's going to be good. Focus forward here. He's fast car, Tim. You can talk him back to the front here. Done it before. I trust Derek and Tim up there and, and the engineers to, to make the calls. And I think that's why it's hard when when we miss an easy one like that. You know, that's a moment of really just total frustration. IndyCar 36 was brought to you by Firestone, the first name in Indy Racing. For Ed Carpenter and Carpenter Racing, the Iowa weekend has been a series of challenges, but by the halfway point of the race, Ed has worked to 14th after starting 22nd. The car is good, and despite remaining a lap down, Ed's speed is actually quicker than the leader's. The car was a lot better on race night than it was the day before. Quicker than the leader. The engineers did a really good job, you know, coming up with the right adjustments for the race. Quicker the car on the race track. By lap 178, Ed has climbed to 11, still a lap down. But suddenly, the third caution period of the night presents the team a slim opportunity for redemption. Oh! Contact! Ryan Briscoe and Joseph Newgarden in the wall. So are we going to get a wave around again here? Nope, nope. Dixon stayed out. See them later. Copy. So how far can we go? What do we do? 224. We're going to stay out. We need to pass Dixon and hope for another yellow. Yep. It was definitely a gamble. I was worried about it. Whether I get my lap back or not, if this thing goes green, you know, this could come back to bite us. But with what had happened earlier in the race, that was the move to make. So here we come to the green uh, flag. Green, 195 green, green. laps will be complete at the line. 55 laps remain. Mark Jane Skeptics and is out in front of a gaggle of cars in one. Tagliani and Carpenter touch in the setup of turn number one. Marco with the move to get around them. Carpenter wants a lap back. He is running hard to Scott Dixon's high side. Alex Tagliani is there. Meanwhile, Marco Andretti hits the, hits the button. He wants tags off the floor. And Hitchcliffe backs into the wall after contact. 
Great job, buddy. We got it back. Great job. Ed Carpenter was racing Scott Dixon tooth and nail as he gets back on the lead lap. We would have stayed in front of him, I think, either way, but to, to catch the yellow, basically, as soon as we cleared him and get back on sequence with everyone else was a, a big, big positive. You are P10. Nice job. Thanks. That couldn't have worked out any better. Ed Carpenter's going to make a late pit stop here. He's the last car on the lead lap. He has nothing to lose here doing this. Nothing to lose. He's, he's going to have fresh tires, Mike. Yeah. He's going to be full good. ready to end. And his car's been racy at times. He's time. fast. Get ready. Get ready. Here's green, the green, green flag at the line. 200. Four laps will be complete. Scott Dixon breaks to the front in turn number one. I like that move by Carpenter coming in to get new tires. He's got, you know, basically 25, 30 lap newer tires than the leaders. He's got a long ways to go to catch up. Sato is a lap down. Carpenter tries to move through the field now and be a contender here. A contender indeed. By lap 243, Ed has overhauled both Justin Wilson and Graham Rahal and sits eighth. Further evidence of his speed is fastest lap of the race honors at 181.4 miles per hour. But with his sights locked on Rubens Barrichello in seven, he simply runs out of laps. We've got a car spinning. It looks like Catherine Legg has spun and made contact in turn number two. That's going to bring out the caution, and that may well end this one. It's a little frustrating just because, you know, we're so close to picking up more spots, but, you know, that's, you can't, those are things you can't control. Ryan hunter Ray, your race winner under caution. Despite a strong recovery to finish eighth, Ed's frustration remains. Our weakness is that first stint we get you know, this race our weakness was... Well, that's the right. You don't always get those opportunities to have a car capable of winning. And that's where the frustration comes from. And with that, Ed Carpenter, the racer, shifts gears. Back to that of husband and father attending to the details of getting the family back home to Indianapolis. We, we just go home. Then we're home. We don't we get up at 10 and we miss part of the afternoon. Kids are going to be tired either way. The race was over and I was done driving for the night, so it was back to, back to being a husband and being a good dad.